Cat's Paw Eye Splice. Hello everybody, welcome back and here we go, another little um, knot, well it's not a knot, it's a splice as such that I've learnt this time, is the Cat's Paw Eye Splice and the whole idea of this particular, it is an eye splice as such, so in other words it will hold together. Um, unfortunately, I don't have slippery rope here, but if you've got fairly slippery rope here, you can actually adjust the size of your eye at the end here. Now this knot is, at the moment, it's quite a popular knot, it keeps rearing its little head, and I've seen it used a lot for dog leads, etc. So in other words, you can get yourself some form of clip in your eye splice here, and there you go, you can take your dog out for a walk with a rather decorative and different looking dog lead as such. And as you can see, it's just got a nice pattern here on um, the actual cat's paw eye splice itself. Um, and all I've done is I've taken a piece of rope, I've put an eye in the size that I wanted. At this end here, I've actually done some common, no it's not common, it's cell, cell makers whipping. And then in here, I have put the actual cat's paw eye splice. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and cut another piece of rope and I will show you how to tie this. Oh, and also just before I go, this was actually taken from a book called Knots for Beachcombers and Mariners. And to be honest, it's a nice little book, this one. It's got some interesting little projects to do in there and if you're interested in this book at all I will put a link in the description below so that you can go and order yourself one. It's not a big book, it's fairly cheap but to be honest it does have some nice little projects inside for you to be getting on with. Okay so anyway I'm off to go and cut a piece of rope and I'll see you in a second. Right so here is my length of rope that I want to put the cat's paw eye splice in and the next thing that I need to do is I need to establish what size loop to put in the end of my rope here. So in other words in this particular one here because I'm saving money I've only gone for a small loop just to give it as an example here. So you will need to decide exactly what size loop you want to create in the end of your rope. So in other words, for this one, I'm just going to do this as an example just to show you how to do it. You'll need to determine yourself what you want to put in there. So now that I've created the size loop that I want, now you want to make it a little bit bigger than you imagine because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the cat's paw or we're going to create the actual cat's paw eye splice itself. And to do that is very, very simple. All we do is I get hold of the left hand rope like so, the right hand like, and try and untwist it. And gradually, as you untwist it, as I untwist it, it's a little bit difficult to do, but you will then see you end up, that's what I'm after, you will end up with those three like round blobs at that point there. And the next thing that we want to do is, then when we've created those three round blobs there, we want to line them up, one beside the other. So we end up with them at the top, like so. So you can see all I've done is untwist it, and then what we're looking for, this is what we're looking for here, is basically that the rope is coming round, forming a loop, and then going back and following the line of the actual lay of the rope itself. So you see I've got three nice loops here with three nice lines coming down there, just following the pattern of the rope. Then the next thing I want to do, and this, this is just to make it a little bit easier, I get hold of my fid and I'm passing my fid through the three holes just to make it open it up. And If you find it's too difficult with all three at once, Depends on how hard lay your rope is. Just open them up like so. And then once I've opened up the first one, I will pass my rope through that. And there we go. There's, there's my rope going through the first one. I then get hold of the second one. And once again, pass my fid through just to open it up. Keep opening it up. Stretch the, that loop out. And then pass my rope through again, so I'm going to take a bit more and then get hold of it and pass my rope through that loop there, like so. 
and there it comes. It's a little bit stiff to do. And then finally, there's the final one. Pass my fid through that loop there like so. Open it up nicely. And then pass my rope through that as well. In fact, let's take a bit more through. You've got it. Does take a bit of effort if you've got a hard lay rope. Mine's a little bit hard lay. And there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. It's slipping now. You can see now, as I pull on that, it's slipping through. So all I've got to do now is just open that one up a bit more, pass my rope through, like so, pass it through like so, pull it through, and there we have it. We've now done the first part of just let the rope slacken off a bit. Oh, it's twisting a bit. There we go. Slackened off a bit. And there we've got the first part of our cat's paw. Now, you would think you would think that this is completed, but as you can see here now, it is actually adjustable. So I've made my loop smaller or pull it the other way and I've made it larger. But what I want to do now is I want to form the loop at this end at the exact size that I want. And then the next thing I do is what we did on the bottom piece with regards to getting these ones to lift and form their own loops is we now need to do this on the top one. And once again, the choice is yours as to what distance you have it. Obviously, because this one, this is the thing about this is, because it actually slides, so as you can see, it does slide, you can use it as an adjustable um, splice as such. But the B, just be just remember that if you say, for example, have it on, on an object like this, if you pull on the main rope, you could possibly cause the actual eye to open up. And this is where the next one comes into play because eventually you'll only be able to open it up so far and then these loops will then lock against those loops there, if you see what I mean. So anyway, let's get on and tie the next batch of loops. And so the next thing I do is exactly the same as the time before, just get hold of my rope and go against the actual turns themselves until we end up with three loops. There we go, we should have it. Three loops there have now appeared in my knot work. And we want them in order. So there we go, one, two, three, just tweeze them out, and there we have it. As you can see here now, what we've got here is, just show you that again, sorry, my rope's fighting me on the other end. So as you can see here now, the loop is going up, round, round the back, and then it's coming out at this point here. Up, round, the back, and then coming up this point here. And you can see here, I can pass my marlin spike straight through the lot there. Okay, so the next thing I do is I open up each of these in turn just to make them a bit bigger so I can pass my rope. And I know for a fact is that this fit here is approximately the same size diameter as the actual rope itself there. Okay, so I've opened that one up. And so what I do now is I go to the end of my rope and this is badly planned because my rope is now tied around something and you'll hear something drop maybe, and here we go. Okay, so here is the other end of my rope. So the next thing I do is I take the, that end, pass it through that first loop like so, then get hold of the second loop. If it's slack enough, pass the cord through again, and it seems to be a lot better this time. And then my final loop there, open that one up, and then pass that through. And then hopefully, all goes according to plan. As I pull on this, whoops, there we go, I'm pulling it through. And there we have it. Just pull it nice and tight, square it off nicely, there we go. And there we go, we have a nice cat's paw ice splice in the end of our rope. 
So what I want to do is once again, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. And this is a nice little knot. I, uh, sorry, not knot, but splice. I don't know what the strength of it is, but it is adjustable. We can pull down on it and adjust it so we can make our eye a little bit bigger or smaller. Trouble is, if you've got a rope like mine, but eventually, if you get too much pressure on it, those two points there will meet up at that point. Now, I don't know what strength there is in this. Somebody is testing it, and as soon as I find out what strength there is in this, you know, you, I'll let you know as well. But, as a little splice, rather decorative, it's nice. I like this one. So anyway, once again, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you hated it, but please, do leave me a comment down below, and let's have a chat about the cat's paw eye splice. Thanks again then. Bye-bye.